Oh my hot lord. I am not prepared for this today. Oh man. All I've been doing is stripping. Stripping this paint off. And uh I'll get you the product here in a moment, but I got it from uh, Home Depot. No, they didn't pay me to say that either. Haven't even gotten paid one penny for this. <laughs> but I kind of figured, um, you know, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it right. You know, that's, that's kind of the whole thing. I want it to be done right. Because I don't have any information on this thing, so I want to do it. The right way. The best right way. Best right way possible. <laughs> and that's only what I know. <laughs> the best right way as far as uh, the cards that I'm dealt with on this. Let me get this thing set up. Right. There we go. So as you can see here, I'm just getting a generous amount of this uh, paint stripper. Um, I'm putting on the troubled areas. And I'm just working the brush. I know you can put it on there. People stop commenting on this. On this, Come on now. The, uh, I know you can put it on there. And I know that you can uh, let it sit for like 15 minutes. And let all this shit bubble up. You know. Like no big deal. But I don't have a lot of time in the world. <laughs> I really don't even have time to be doing this project, to be honest with you, but but I realized if you take the brush and you rub it in, it's, you know, kind of slowly takes off that layer, layer by layer by layer by layer by layer until it's bare metal. <laughs> As you can see, there, this is how it used to be. Or what it looked like. And I'm trying to... I got to get some of these troubled spots. And you can see some of this clean metal. And as you go around there... There are a lot of troubled spots. Like this is all powder coated. Which is a special kind of um, process. That... Um, where they do is they put the paint on. And then they throw it in a big ass oven. And then they uh, they pretty much cook it on there. And it is the worst the worst when it comes to removing i know that there's product out there so once again people please shut up i know all this but it is a pain in the butt so anybody that thinks that they know of a better way you know what just tell me of the better way but don't don't sit there and criticize me and everything else about products that work and this or that, that or the other. I don't, I don't really care. Better process. That's all I'm for. Because sitting here for like four days, like nine hour shifts, trying to remove all this paint is the worst. I, I wish it upon nobody. <laughs> and I know that there's product out there that you could just spray. I don't know if I've already mentioned this, but I know that there's product that you can spray on. And it just kind of like bubbles up. And then you just use a power washer and just kind of blow it all out. But one, I don't have a pressure washer. Two, I don't want to buy a pressure washer at this point because I've only got like the end of, well, all the electronics and the batteries and the motor goes up there on top and some uh, electrical harnesses go here in the back, but for most people, for most pilots, I'd call it the APU section. <laughs> uh, other pilots will understand. Some mechanics probably too. That's all right. Just having fun here. But, um, yeah, this process sucks. It is not fun. It is super time consuming. But I feel it's going to be worth it all in the end. That's what we're looking for. 
the uh, I had the before pictures. I'm just gonna need to like upload them because I haven't uploaded anything yet. But uh, the guy that initially owned it had uh had passed away, and the children didn't know anything about flying, so they sold it, and then. Here I am, scrawny little kid, <laughs> uh, comes along and picks it up for a hella cheap price. I won't release that information um, on how much, but it was super mega cheap. I promise you, like, anybody could have picked it up. And no, it wasn't thousands of dollars either. But um, he was a... A ranger in the army under the 10 or how do they say it 101st airborne or 101 airborne or you guys can comment on that and tell me is it 101st or 101 airborne I don't know either way he fell ill passed away unfortunately but he I guess he was uh well I already said it, he was a ranger but he had all the markings on the side of the airplanes. They all kind of, it sat like right here on the side. And then there were some decals up on the nose. And part of the agreement was, is that if I um, buy the airplane as cheap as I did, that I would put it back to the original skin that was on it with the father that flew it for the children uh, for them to come back and, and see it fly again because they knew how much this airplane really uh, really meant to them or to, to him I'm sorry and um, you know they kind of figured well well you just might be that guy that just may you know get the cheap price and take off and do whatever the hell you want which is ultimately, Yes, that's what I'm doing, but I'm also going to keep my word, too, um, that I'm going to put it back to the original markings. Uh, because the airplane looked pretty cool the way that it was before I started tearing it all apart and making it look like this. You know, like, come on, I still got to take that off. I've just been too lazy. Actually, honestly, I take that back. I've just been so busy with stripping all this. So the... um. So yeah, I gotta go get some of those decals, and uh, I'm, I'm gonna keep my word and, uh, and do what I say I was gonna do, which is restore it to the way that it was before he passed away. And um, yeah, so that's the whole plan here, and that is why I am stripping all the paint off because I'm gonna restart. And plus, there was also some uh, concerns I had. I wanted to do a penetra uh, penetration and die. Um, you know, a lot of aircraft mechanics we use that system, and wh where we take a like a red dye, it's like a spray can. Well, first you put you you put the red dye, like you clean up the area, you spray this red dye on, you use a cloth, you wipe it up, like till it's like clean, like this. And then there's an activator, and I forget what it's called because I haven't done it in years. And you spray that activator on the top, and it's like clear, but it reacts um, through like UV, I guess. And if there's a crack or some sort of structure issue where this dye had penetrated, it then put like it's like a light bulb from going off to on like you will see it it's incredible stuff and that's how you know if you have uh, a structure issue or if you have anything that's going to threaten the structure of the aircraft and a lot of aircraft mechanics use it um i don't know how often they're using it because i never really went out in the in the field and really worked uh per se as long as most people have um i had other interests but um i'm sure that they could probably explain it to you better but that's pretty much all it is is you put this red dye on you wipe it up clean until it's like well clean and then 
you put this activator on and then it, it just sticks out like a sore thumb if there's if there's any issue now if there's no issue or anything like that then uh nothing will happen you know and that that's good you want nothing to happen it's only when something happens that you're uh that you're in bad shape depending on the issue you know because not all um penetration like if there's uh the dye in the penetration or a crack or something like that not all of it's like critical i mean it's not a good thing but it's not like it's not like the airplane is going to fall apart or disintegrate or anything depending on the location of where it's at <laughs> like if i had for instance if i had like this is for the elevators so this is uh how you you pull back to go up or push down to go forward or n nose down or pull back to go nose up. Um, if I were to have like something like if I were to put it on this and it showed like I'm not going to die. Let's just put it that way. It's not good. But if I were to go fly the airplane, not knowing about it, if I didn't do the process, then it's not like I'm going to come crashing down to the earth, which that doesn't really happen anyways, but the, um, for the most part, um, but if it was like something on, on the wing or the main, fu um, the main fuselage or like, let's say something on the gear and I go down and I go to touch down on the runway. Well, there's a lot of weight that happens when you're coming back in, plus all the friction of stopping. And if there was a serious enough issue, then yeah, then the gear could collapse out from underneath it. You could go spinning off the runway. Uh, you know, th that's not good stuff. But uh, if you kind of get my point where I'm trying to get with this, I want to spend five minutes trying to explain it. It doesn't seem worth my time or worthwhile. But, uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, this airplane has been a lot of work so far already. I cut off, uh, I had a friend come out and help me uh, cut off all the skin because I wanted to get down to the bare bones. Plus, some of the skin was like really bad anyways. The, the aircraft was not flight worthy. I literally had to bring it in on a trailer. Um, I went down to U-Haul and um, rented one of them uh, 6x12 U-Haul uh, trailers. And it was just enough. I mean, the trailer pretty much like stopped like, I think it was like like right here. The, the total length of the aircraft, when I measured it, was 20 feet. And I put it on a 12-foot trailer. And I only had from about like right here in this general area, backwards hanging off the back of the trailer... But I also had uh, the nose wheel, which is right here. Obviously, I got it taken all apart, but <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I also had this all the way up to the front, so a lot of the nose section was also hanging over as well. So, and also the, the width from, from this very point of the landing gear to all the way over there to the tip of the landing gear where the, where the bolt is. Uh, is six and a half feet. So the tra I had the if the trailer was like this, I had the plane kind of cockeyed in there and slid up forward. It was a very interesting ride. I can that's all I should tell you. It was a very interesting ride. Picked it up in Tampa and then uh, drove it all the way out to the airport that I'm at now, which I don't want to disclose um, at this moment in time. But, uh, yeah, it's been nice. But I have to share it with, um, you know, a car over there, a car over there. Um, this other airplane, I don't want to show the, the, the tail number because, I don't know, you probably already seen it already. But either way, that's somebody else's plane. It's not my business, but I got to share it. Um, that's how some, some hangers are. They... You know, you can do a share, but some airports don't allow you to share, um, which I I can understand why, due to rules, regulations, and everything else, but honestly, I really don't. What the fuck? 
I oh, well, I don't really understand why sometimes they're they're so harsh about it when. Oh, well, because you already saw the tail number, I suppose. But either way, um, so, some airports just have more more strict rules, and they uh, that's just how they roll. But whatever, I don't care. Airport's their business. Airport's not my business. This is my business. So I'm really focusing on this thing. But yeah, the uh, all this time, all these hours, can't wait to just be done totally with it. Can't wait. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna shut this thing off. I gotta use two hands here in a minute because I gotta go back and wipe up all that stuff now, and uh, so that way it don't get uh, all hard on me. And then it's more of a pain in the butt to try to take it off than it already was to take the pain off. <laughs> if you get what I'm saying. Well, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna check out here. See you next time. All right, bye.